Hello, and Hello. congratulations <laughs> on your Rising Star Award. Thank um, you so much. So what was your reaction when your agent called and said you had been selected as one of our 10 this year? Oh, for me, it was um, just the most pleasant surprise ever. <laughs> I, I really didn't expect to be picked. I mean, I knew about the award and I knew about the Casting Guild of Australia, recognising actors, but... Uh, for me, I just, I never expected it. And it was just such a wonderful, wonderful thing to be acknowledged in this way. Well, um, and I can't I, wait to I, see who else has been picked as well. It's going to be a lovely I've thing. I've had the joy of watching your growth um, for a <laughs> while now. Mm. And, you know, it's not surprising to me that you were picked this year. Um, you've gone from strength to strength and your confidence has grown. Um, tell me, how did you originally get interested in acting how did that come about yeah um I guess so I'm from Cairns originally um and so I've never really grown up in the industry um but I've always loved stories and my whole family has so my my family my parents aren't in the industry my dad's a doctor my mum was a diplomat but mum always grew up reading us yeah reading us books and just really immersing us in the world of stories and fantasy and other worlds. Um, and so from a very young age, I just always wanted to play characters and I always wanted to tell my own stories. My dad bought myself and my older brothers little cameras and we just muck around and dress up and recreate movies. <laughs> um, um, and put on magic shows because we're all, we just love attention. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so my, myself and my older brothers, we all just fell in love with acting because it was just a way for us to be conduits of storytelling. Um, and I think the most, the most immersive way for us to be storytellers. Um, so both my older brothers, like I said, love acting and um, my middle brother, Julian, he's also an actor and he, he was with me in Bureau um, and my older brother, Tom, he's, um, he's a wonderful character actor and loves performing on stage. He's not in the industry per se, but he has just such a passion for it. So well, Why have we not met him yet? <laughs> um, are terrific, the third must be good. <laughs> and your path for further education mm -hmm. was not on the performance side, was it? No, you, it wasn't. Um, about that. Yeah, so originally... I was also very keen to go and study acting um, at an institution, either here, like preferably here, but also overseas. So throughout high school, I um, did short courses at NIDA. Um, I was always interested in NIDA and WAPA primarily, but I also went and studied, um, just did a summer course over at RADA um, in London. Um, and I've always been keen on theatre as well. So it was always my dream to go and do that real training. Um, and after school finished, I, I've always loved filmmaking, as I mentioned, and so I made short films all throughout high school. But I, I actually got into VCA for acting um, after I finished school, yeah. And then for that same year, I also entered a film competition um, for Bond University, and it was called B the BAFTA Awards, so the Bond University Film and Television Awards. And I made these short films, entered them, and I... Strangely, <laughs> I won the overall filmmaker award, which was also um, a full scholarship to attend the uni. And so I had this decision to make between going to VCA and studying acting in a three year degree or studying this fast track two year degree doing filmmaking on the Gold Coast. And for me, it was I think I made the decision and I don't regret anything because I think either way I would have got opportunities and where I am now, I'm so beyond happy that I, I went with what I did um, because I also have that background knowledge now and I've always been, always wanted to do um, other aspects of filmmaking. I've always wanted to write and direct um, and I really learned so much about being on set um, at uni and I made great connections and, you know, being down here is how I got my first job in the industry. So it was just such a weird situation that I ended up being in, but I, I'm so happy with how it turned out. Yeah. Having studied the technical mm -hmm. side of filmmaking, mm -hmm. you really understand how the camera works for you as an artist, how to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid of the device because you know how it's put together. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and you know, editing, you know, 
the other side of it, which is such important, valuable information and takes a lot of actors years of being on set to learn mm. that. So tell me how your first professional gig occurred. I yeah, so I was um, halfway through uni <laughs> and I, I've had agents since high school and so I've just been auditioning and, you know, plugging away at it as you do. Um, haven't, hadn't really gotten any jobs and locked anything in, um, but learning as I went. Um, and then this audition came through for something called the Bureau of Magical Things halfway through uni. And um, I auditioned for it and it was, it just sounded lovely. It was a kids TV series, um, fantasy show about magic and friendship. And, um, and that was with you, Tom. <laughs> you were casting it at the time. And, um, and yeah, I, I auditioned for, it, again, not expecting anything to come from it because in this industry, you get accustomed to not hearing back about things and to disappointment. Um, but yeah, it, it came back through and I um, got a call back and went through that whole process. And strangely enough, my brother also auditioned for it and he also booked it. And so we booked it together, which was just so wonderful. Tell me um, about that experience to have in your first gig to hmm. be sharing that experience with your brother. It must yeah, be possible I, to negative. <laughs> I mean, it was, for me, it was such a wonderful introduction to the industry because it, this was a very scary thing. Um, I think more so for me, even than I think for Julian, um, coming from a place where I had never, I hadn't known about the industry properly and I hadn't been on set. I had all this kind of training and knowledge that I had been accumulating, but stepping onto set and having this first gig and the responsibility of that was kind of a bit scary, um, but it was the most wonderful environment to do so that job itself just the cast and the crew and everyone involved and the storytelling was really lovely um a lovely part like thing to be a part of but then to have my brother there as a support system um for his first job in the industry too it was really wonderful because it was it was quite an intense job um we had long hours and big days and um and you know we had prosthetics <laughs> on you six actors you yeah, carry, so we were we were the leads, work. and we were carrying the show, and um, so we were there every day, basically. And and you know, Julian and I being the being the elves, we had prosthetic ears, <laughs> so we got to do that part of, of um of the job as well, which was so cool because Julian and I we grew up watching Lord of the Rings, and so we were like we're living our dream <laughs> right now. We are we're literally living the dream. Um, of course, you know, he's my brother, and we fight, and we have days where we don't get along. But I think that that was such a great training ground for us to, to you know, learn how to deal. <laughs> I mean, we can deal with each other, but it was like learning how to deal with each other in a new context and be professional on set despite, you know, having this familial relationship, which can be touchy at times. And But I, I think that more than anything, we were just there to support one another and we put that aside, you know, when we were having a rough day. Um, yeah, it was a really nice experience experience yeah my joy of that casting was all six of you were queenslanders you know it was the first time ever we had a series with queensland actors in all of the leads yeah. even though kimmy had you know gone to yeah Sydney, but from was, queensland yeah. yeah and i think yeah that, that was such a lovely thing and we had this real rapport all of us we we had this real friendship um and it was so nice to do that show with that tight knit group. Um, you know, for a lot of us, it was our first gig or it was our first big gig. And um, we looked after each other and we grew together on the show. Um, and we just had a ball oh, as well. Yeah. It was, it was really you nice. Grew, all of you grew so much. We really did. So far. Yeah. Now, tell me about the experience of season two and COVID. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would have, been a very challenging, very difficult, probably frightening experience. Yeah, it was um, It was very challenging. Um, but again, I actually feel very privileged to have been working at that time, not only because I was working, but because of the steep learning curve that we all went through um, being on a show. So we, we were shooting as kind of the world was starting to close off mm. and we we kept going really into the last minute um, in 2020, was it 2020? Yeah. Um, 
And so we we were shooting throughout the pandemic and then we obviously had to stop because we went into lockdown here and um, it was getting kind of too risky to continue shooting. Um, so we took a bit of time off and then we did come back. And when we came back, we um, came back with the COVID safe plan, which was this kind of document which was designed um, and written up to keep us all safe. And it was it was wonderful to come back and shoot after that because it was this groundbreaking new set of rules that we were going to have to operate under um, and that the rest of the world was then going to follow through with because we were one of the first shows to come back, I think, worldwide. And that was that in in and of itself was, I mean, it was a scary time, of course, but it was just a really great experience and um, we we really bonded even more through that, I think, because we, we had this real bubble and we had this real kind of sense of purpose when the rest of the world was looking so dark and, and scary. Um, we were coming together and setting an example, I think, for other productions. It was, it was really great. Um, yeah. What, um, what's one of the best memories you have of your two years on Bureau? Is there an episode or a situation that stands out that was either a great challenge or mm -hmm. just an awful lot of fun? I really particularly, because it was so iconic for me, I um, when Imogen in season two, when she gets turned into a mermaid, um, <laughs> was quite amazing because I um, obviously grew up watching H2O um, and get getting to put on one of those tails and get in the water because it was also for me, it was a quite a challenging thing because it was the middle of winter and I, I'm a Cairns girl. I feel the cold, something fierce. And I actually, my lips go blue. Like it's not even a joke. I start to turn blue. And so there was this added challenge of keeping me looking like it was the middle of summer and it was gorgeous and, <laughs> and warm. Um, but it was just such an amazing experience getting to put on that tail, do the training um I didn't do a heap of training but even just that little bit of time that I got to spend doing that um and then I guess just all the all of the group scenes um I really loved just everyone together um because we did have this really lovely bond and connection and we had a heap of fun it was just so much fun and um the 1920s stuff as well, I think, because of the, the amazing costumes and set design. And I've always wanted to do a period piece. So and geez, that was just you like, look great in that era. Oh, it, yeah. God, yeah. It was just perfect. And I was like, oh, wonderful. I, I can't believe I'm so lucky to get this little tiny taste of this mm -hmm. um, in, in the most fun and delightful way. Yeah. So the series ends mm -hmm. and you're back in, in the pool of acting. Yes. What was next? What happened? What was next? Um, so this year, I've been very fortunate to have a couple of a couple of jobs here and there. Um, and because I, for me, it was really scary finishing bureau because I it was my first big job, and you kind of every time you're auditioning for something, you're like, "Will I ever work again? Who <laughs> knows?" But I'll give it a shot. <laughs> um, and so for me, it really did feel like okay, back in the deep end, I'm just going to do my best and see how I go. And if people like me, then they like me. And if they don't, then they don't. And that was kind of the mentality I had going forward. Um, but I know, I knew that I had grown and I knew that I was hungrier for jobs and I was hungrier for an array of interesting roles and different, different things. I loved doing bureau and kids TV, but I'm, I was ready to kind of take the plunge and, you know, take the next step. So I, I have been lucky to get a couple of roles. I had a small part in Baz Luhrmann's Elvis film that was shooting here on the Gold Coast, which was just the most incredible experience for me um, because despite it being a small part, I, I got this taste of what it's like to work on such a huge production at such a grand scale and um, obviously American work as well, which was um, very daunting for me. <laughs> having come from Bureau and then going on to this huge production. Um, but, I, again, I had the most amazing time on that. And getting. And what, was, what was the audition process for that? Uh, so what for that, did you jump through to get that gig? For me, actually, weirdly, I, I never, ever expected to get that role or to get that gig. Um, and I was so hopeful and, and so looking 
out for getting a gig for Elvis because I knew it was shooting all throughout Europe when we were shooting season two. And so I was like, oh, I hope that something comes through. And even if it's tiny and I, I'm barely even there, um, I just I just want to audition for that because it sounds fantastic. Um, and so I, I did get an audition and, and it came through and I put down and a self-tape for it because I just self-tapes are mainly what I do and it's what I've been doing for years and I'm very comfortable doing self-tapes and I think in the world that we live in now I think it's a good skill to have so I'm glad in a way that I've just had to do self-tapes um and then I got the self-tape for it and I sent it off and I didn't hear back for months and I went okay that's fine didn't get that one that's fine I went, I'll just forget about it and then I got a call from my agent and and they said you've booked it. And I, I didn't get a call back. And I, I just kind of then wow. I, I was so happy, but then I immediately panicked and I went, oh no, they've probably made a mistake. <laughs> um, goodness, I have to do this now, which was scary. But I think that every job for me is a bit like that. And I think that I, I suffer from imposter syndrome, which I think a lot of people do. And um, I am constantly trying to deal with my confidence and you know I put on a character for myself when I'm doing things and when I'm auditioning and when I'm doing interviews like this I'm constantly trying to you know um inspire confidence in myself and I think that with every job you get better and better at that and you learn from that um so yeah it was just wonderful for me to have that experience and to um and to gain confidence from it, to know that I can do it and and can do well, um, yeah. And and the, it's been the same with every other job that I've had this year. Um, I, I I feel like I'm just stepping and stepping. And sometimes you take a step back along the way, and then you just keep stepping forward. Um, and it's it's just a lovely thing, a, a lovely journey to take yourself. Well, if memory serves, you also had the the actor experience of. You have the job. Great. Fantastic job. Looking forward to it. Yeah. And then it disappears. Yes. Is that correct? Tell me that story. Yeah. This, this year has been really fantastic and it's been really hard and it has been that way for so many people. And I just count myself lucky to have had work this year, but I did get a big opportunity this year, um, which I was very excited about because it was the next big step, I think, for me. So I booked a role um, on a film which was starring Natalie Portman in, in that was going to shoot in Sydney called Days of Abandonment. And again, it wasn't it wasn't a huge part. It was a supporting role, but it was a key role. And again, it it was just a mark for me that and a, a little notch on my belt of confidence where I went, okay, I can do this. And you know, I, I impressed the director, and I, I felt like I got along well with them, and I couldn't work wait to work with the creative team. Um, and at the same time, I also booked another gig. I booked a role in True Spirit, um, which was shooting here on the Gold Coast. Uh, and I had to, again, make that decision between the two. And that was such a difficult decision to make. Um, I, I ended up going with Days of Abandonment and I felt like that was the good decision at the time because the dates just clashed. And with COVID and everything that's happening, it's just making the world so difficult for actors right now if you have to travel anywhere for different jobs. Um, but then uh, 22 hours prior to shooting, Natalie Portman actually pulled out due to unforeseen reasons, personal reasons, um, and the gig was cancelled. Uh, so I had turned down True Spirit and then I had this gig that <laughs> the, the rug was swept out from under my feet and I had this kind of moment of feeling completely crushed with disappointment myself and and feeling abandoned <laughs> um which was kind of poignant um but I I think I bounced back quite quickly and I just went look I I need to learn from this this is an opportunity to learn that it is a hard business it's th this is going to happen all the time um in this industry that we work in because there are so many uh, like unforeseen factors and so many moving parts in this industry um and obviously you have to be happy when opportunities do happen and come through, but you can't be, you can't 
devote everything to that, that thing. And that's why I think it's important as actors or as anyone, you kind of have other things going and you have other passions and things to distract you if, if something does go wrong. Um, and so you can pick yourself back up again and just keep pushing because it is about, it is about that. It's about continuing taking the steps and continuing the journey despite having felt like you've fallen flat on your face. And what are some of those yeah. other passions that you have? Um, oh, okay. I've always, I've always been quite a creative person across the board. So I, I paint quite a bit um, and I try and devote a lot of time to that when I can. Um, I love music as well. So I've kind of neglected my violin a little bit, but I, I grew up playing violin and um, a couple of other string instruments and I've, I've always been a singer. So, and like I said, writing and directing, I've always loved telling stories. And so I'm in the process of putting together some things, um, some scripts, and um, I want to I wanna get to a point where I can, you know, create my own content and, um, work with like-minded people. I have a couple of really close friends who are keen to get a little company or group together and Great. put together some short films, which will be fun. Good. I'm yeah. really pleased to hear that because that's yeah. so important that you create your own work. And sure. you're yeah. such a clever young woman and grounded. And because of your the way you were brought up and allowed to pursue your passions and... Mm -hmm. You're very brave. You don't give yourself that credit, but you're a very brave young lady. Thank you. And Thank you. <laughs> it's lovely to see that you are exercising those other muscles. Mm. And I think it's important. It's yeah. vital. Write that role that will pop mm. your career. For sure. You know, and make yeah. it. You have that skill. Mm. You know how to make it. And you don't need lots and lots of money to make good no, work. not at all. And because it's about, it's about maintaining your passion and... Because for me, it always, whenever I start to lose momentum, I have to bring myself back to my original love, which is love, love of stories, love of playing characters with authenticity. And I think that writing your own content, creating your own work is such a wonderful and easy way to do that. And like you said, it doesn't have to be great. You don't have to enter it into festivals. You can just make it for you and it can be dodgy and it can be weird. And But yeah. if you love it and it, it instills your love of the craft, then just do it. Like just, you know, get your iPhone out, get your little camcorder out and do something weird. Like <laughs> I, yeah. All right. I'm, I'll finish this up with one last question. Yes. The typical question that you're asked in every interview, where do you <laughs> see yourself in five years? Oh, okay. This is a tricky one. Um, I guess it's, it's hard because I want, I see, I want to see myself in so many places and I don't want to limit myself at all. Um, obviously acting is my passion and it's what I want to pursue and I want to be successful in acting. So I guess I want to see myself doing and, and doing the work and playing amazing characters and diverse characters and telling important stories and stories that inspire people to tell more stories um, because I think that's so important that we don't forget that stories aren't that just there to be noise. They're there to inspire people and to change the world. That's what I love about stories. They have the ability to do that. Um, they have real power behind them. And so I don't want to just tell stories that are just, you know, background noise. Um, but also I want to write my own stuff and I want to um, create my own things and, and you know, learn a language <laughs> and learn another instrument. I just want to kind of ex be experiencing the world and doing as much good as I can. So I guess I don't really see myself anywhere in five years in particular. I just I want to be getting better and doing better and giving back where I can. Well, it's been an absolute joy to have this conversation. Um, you. You're a real favorite of mine. I have a very soft spot. <laughs> Thank and you. I'm so thrilled to welcome you as one of our rising stars this year. Oh, I'm so um, thrilled to be a part of it. Honestly, in regards to your brother, of course. And, uh, I look forward to meeting Tom Cullen at some point. I'll let him there know. There may be a role in his future. Congratulations, <gasps> Lizzie. And, um, I look <laughs> forward to seeing so you in an audition room soon. Thank you.